हाई एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग हाउ यू ऑल डूइंग ए दिशा स्नेहा अद्विका स्मिता नगेंद्र पायल वृंदा गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू येस ग्लोबल गेमर्स वी डेफिनेटली नो अबाउट दिस एंड वीडियो विल बी आउट रियली सून हे एलिस पालक आई एम डूइंग रियली वेल हाउ आर यू ऑल डूइंग great awesome so what are we going to do today it's going to be a really important class right so today's class is all about getting a complete overview of this chapter synthetic fibers and plastic so that you can connect all ideas i'm sure you have a lot of ideas about this chapter there are so many sub topics that are there let's connect all of them right so it's going to be a power pack class be ready with a pen and paper for sure हे नरसिंग पापिया स्नेहा शाश्वंत गुड टू हैव यू बैक गाइस इशिका गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सो ये सिंथेटिक फाइबर्स एंड प्लास्टिक्स आई थिंक वीव कम सच अ लॉन्ग वे वेन वी टॉक अबाउट एवोल्यूशन ऑफ क्लोथिंग राइट दिस जर्नी हैज बीन अमेजिंग दिस जर्नी हैज बीन कलरफुल एंड टॉकिंग ऑफ कलर्स यू पीपल वर ऑल्सो डिस्कसिंग अबाउट योर फेवरेट कलर्स इज इंट इट सो आई वॉज जस्ट रीडिंग योर चैट and you were discussing about your favorite colors great hey prakash ritisha anukriti thank you guys thank you so much awesome awesome so yes this journey of clothing has also been really colorful and this is what we will be discussing today but before we dive straight into it you need to give me loads and loads of thumbs up loads and loads of smileys to let me know that everything is working fine thank you global glamers harsh is saying blue okay noted quick quick thumbs up in the chat box loads of smileys to let me know that everything is working fine and we can get started yes a big high five Yes, Chitanya, Divya, Dakshu, Janvi. Of course, I remember all of you. Hey, Divya, very warm welcome. Ritesh is also here. Great. So, what do you see on the screen? You have seen us coming up with amazing sessions for you people. Like every session is so very informative. It's really interesting. It's really you know amazing sessions are coming up. You can see our commitment. over here on youtube live right and this is definitely our mission to make sure that you excel in your exam that you ace your exam now we bring to you byju's package and a lot of packages are there actually so byju's classes online tuitions and this goes without saying that byju is actually is the best app for you you'll get a lot of things out there isn't it okay you want to mentee definitely we'll come to that also Yes yes definitely Awesome so I'm sure you all know about this and you know about the important features you know about everything about this app by juice classes as well so you would be taught by india's top teachers and that is really important in our learning process in our learning if you really want to progress that's the main point isn't it Correct Then of course we've got two teacher model doubt clearing sessions as and when right and of course you can choose the timing of your class that's the most important part Shashun is saying yes ma'am we know really well good to know that I hope you're getting one to one guidance because that is another really interesting feature Awesome And of course so much more is there and everything is just for you know you can try this out for as low as rupees 199 so go ahead i'm really really super confident i know this for sure you know without a shadow of doubt you would definitely love all these classes out there because you know the response that you give to us over here in the live classes that's amazing that's how i know that you will definitely love these classes as well great so you know what to do the link is there in the description box go ahead and try this out I see a lot of you are saying you would try a lot of you are saying you've already tried great good to know that 
All right, coming back to our chapter now. So, plastic and clothes, like everywhere, right? We've been talking about plastics and clothes, about this in this chapter so much and when we talk about clothes they can be made using natural as well as synthetic fibers right so this brings us to a very very important term i would say natural fibers synthetic fibers and plastics are made up of large units which are known as polymers we've done all this we've discussed all this now it's the time when you actually recall all the important concepts in one go Yes, absolutely. Yes, Payal. So, poly basically means many, as Payal is suggesting us. And mer basically means units. So, many units joined together. Hey, I see the next very important term that you people have already written. Monomer, correct. Now, mono basically means one, right? So, these are the individual units that are there. And these individual units, they keep repeating themselves to form the polymers. And then a chain of multiple polymers are basically making up fiber. So, in a way, we can say that we have monomers and then polymers. And then finally, we have fibers. Yes, so polymers are made up of small chemical units which are known as monomers. Hey Divya, we are, we are really going to come to the linking really soon. Yes, Janat, we'll definitely plan something out. Like a necklace. Hey Anukudi, you saw that session. Awesome. Great. Good to see that you people are actually able to recall everything important. Now, cotton. We all know what cotton is. It's like the king of natural fibers, right? Cotton is made up of polymer called cellulose. And cellulose is further made up of large units of glucose. And clearly you can see that this is also a polymer over here. Yes, Dakshana. Whatever you need from us, you can definitely keep posting that and we'll definitely work on that. Yes, Neha, Papia, cellulose. Further made of glucose, correct. Absolutely right. Then we also talked about fibers. We talked about natural fibers and we talked about synthetic fibers. So natural fibers, the name is self-explanatory, right? They are obtained from natural sources like plants. Say for example, cotton, jute and animals like wool, silk. And on the other hand, we have synthetic. So synthetic is basically that something that is man-made that is made by us human-made right so they are synthesized or produced in laboratories using chemicals yes they were absolutely man-made hey palak correct cotton jute wool silk all are natural yes papia absolutely right yes Smitha, you are giving the correct answer. You are giving the correct examples for synthetic fibers. Now, what is the chemistry behind this, you know, synthetic fibers? We have already discussed this. So we will quickly recall this point as well. You see a term petrochemicals. Now, petrochemicals are those chemicals which are basically obtained from petroleum and natural gas. So, all the synthetic fibers that we are talking about, they are prepared using raw materials of petroleum origin, which are known as petrochemical. Correct, Sneha? Agrama, that's okay. Now, I want to ask you, since this is, you know, complete chapter in one go, we've already discussed this, why are we using synthetic fibers? What do you think? Why are we actually using synthetic fibers? Let's see who's going to answer this one. I see a lot of you posting answers real quick today. I can see some of you writing about, okay, about the cost. It's affordable, it's cheap, durable. Good to read that. Wrinkle free. See, we will remember this. Yes, Smita, Dakshina, Sneha, all the answers that you people are giving are absolutely correct. 
So, when we talk about natural fibers, they've got some drawbacks. That's in a way leading us to the synthetic fibers. Now, what are the drawbacks of natural fibers? First of all, they are expensive, right? Not that cheap. And, of course, animal lovers would not like this, that, you know, animal cruelty is also being done in a way. Plus, they are, of course, not wrinkle-free. It's not easy to maintain them. They can be affected by insects for sure. Not that long-lasting also. So a lot of things are there, right? And all this is, in a way, leading us to the need to have synthetic fibers. Yes, Akrama. Absolutely right. So, in a way, we develop the synthetic fibers and these synthetic fibers have a lot of good qualities, right? So, first of all, they are cost effective. Then, of course, they are long lasting and hence we can say that they are durable. Then, of course, they absorb less water. Okay, you will tell me the next one. Come on, let's see if you remember. I've told you three of them. Dakshana, cost is already done. What else is there? Okay, something to do with the drying time. Is it more or is it less? Hey, Nasingo. Correct. Sudha. Smita. Vinayak, Divya. Absolutely right. So, in a way, they take less drying time. So, they dry up quickly also. So, you know, you can always use them for outdoor purposes, you know, for, as, you know, rain gear. They can be easily used. Correct. Yes, a lot of you are saying wrinkle-free, wrinkle-free. So, yes, that is the next point. It's very easy to maintain them. So, yes, they are wrinkle-free. Yes, good to know that you people remember all this pretty well. Now, the types of synthetic fibers. So, we've discussed about rayon, nylon, polyester, acrylic. We've discussed about these. Some of them, we've, I know, I know what you're about to say. We will be giving you a video on the same when it comes to polyester, acrylic. Don't worry about this. But today also, let's have a brief discussion. Yes, yes, Disha, all your messages are completely visible. Okay, so let's start with rayon. Now over here, you see a natural source. That is wood pulp. So fiber obtained by the chemical treatment of wood pulp. That is, of course, your rayon. Rayon is also known as regenerated cellulose. We've discussed about this as well, right? Now, it is semi-synthetic. It's not fully synthetic. It's not the first fully synthetic fiber. It's a semi-synthetic fiber. Why? Because you can see this natural source, wood pulp. So there you go. You know why it is not fully synthetic. Of course, it's a natural source and then chemical treatment is being done over it and this is how it becomes semi-synthetic. A lot of you are saying it's also known as artificial silk. So let's come to that point. See, when we talk about silk, silk we get from silkworm, right? It's a natural fiber. Now, First of all, being a natural fiber, it's costly. It leads to animal cruelty. And then, of course, this is not something that we want. But what we want from silk is the beautiful texture that fascinates everyone. So, a lot of efforts were being made to, you know, actually make artificial silk. And then, we came up with this. That is rayon. After a lot of hard work, we could finally find something that resembles silk. So, there you go. Rayon is actually your artificial silk and it resembles silk in appearance, texture, shine but it's actually cheaper and wrinkle free as well. We can dye it in a variety of colors also. So yes, that dyeing is also possible. You can have various beautiful colors. Correct. Okay, tell me some uses of rayon. Now that you people have revised the entire chapter really well, quickly you can let me know some uses. Please make a session on how to complete syllabus. Alright, noted. Let's see who's going to answer. Some uses of rayon. Come on, quickly. 
I see a lot of you writing bed sheets, carpets, bed sheet, bed sheet, bed sheet, carpet, carpet. Mostly these two terms are coming up. All right, so yes, it can be mixed with cotton to make bed sheets, and yes, you're right. It can be mixed with wool to make carpets as well. Then textile. Somebody was writing about wearing it. So yes, textile, tie cords. All these are the uses of rayon. Yes, Smita. Correct. Now moving on to nylon. Let's talk more about nylon now. So nylon was completely man-made. Right. So you know that which is the first synthetic fiber that's completely man-made, fully synthetic actually. So yes, we can call nylon as fully synthetic. So in 1931, it was basically synthesized without using any raw, any natural raw material. Right. So it was actually prepared from coal, water, and air. So no natural raw material is being used. So no plants, no animals. So never get confused, you know, your book says rayon and then the next topic is nylon. That does not mean that rayon is the first fully synthetic fiber. Correct. Yes, Jannat. And we also discussed about this, right? Nylon thread is actually stronger than a steel wire, isn't it? How many of you remember this? We shared this amazing point with all of you. Yeah, great Payal, Prakash, Ishika. Now somebody was asking, let's talk about the properties as well. And these properties are very much linked to the uses. So you can directly connect. See, for example, we say that they are strong. So they are strong, that's why they are being used to make ropes. So indirect questions can also come in your exam. Why is nylon being used to make ropes? You know the reason, right? Yes, elastic as well. Correct, correct. So, you've got socks that are made up of nylon. Then it's lustrous. It's having a shine also. Then lightweight. So, seat belts are also made up of this. And of course, easy to wash. And because of all these properties, it became very popular for making various articles. Yes, Smita has given a long list of items which are made up of nylon. Advika is sharing the same. Yes, Daksh, you absolutely right. Yes, I can see many of you are saying Sneha is also posting some answers. So yes, you people are right about the uses. You've already figured that out. So we have ropes, we have tents. Parachutes, toothbrush, sleeping bags, curtains. You can actually add socks to this list as well. And a lot of things that you people are saying. Absolutely right. Yes, yes, toothbrush as well. We've discussed that. Great! Now let's move on to polyester. So, when we talk about polyester, you can see poly plus ester, right? So you know what's the monomer in this? What's the repeating unit? It is ester. Now what exactly is ester? That's a new term that you're hearing, right? So esters are chemicals which give a fruity smell. That's how you can identify ester. I'm sure we know when you'll grow up, when you'll go to the lab, you'll actually be able to identify esters all by yourself as well. Yes, so the monomer in case of polyester is going to be ester. Talking about the properties, it's easy to wash. So it remains crisp and it's really easy to wash. Right. Second, of course, it does not get wrinkled easily. That's really important property. And of course, it's durable as well and i would want all of you to pick up something that's made of polyester you'll realize that it's actually soft as also if you have anything around you right now you can check this out as well yes correct absolutely 
absolutely right. See, a lot of you are already posting. Hey, Advika is talking about Tedaline. We are going to come to that point really soon. There you go. So, PT. What is this PT pet? Okay, so this is basically polyethylene terephthalate. And it's a very popular polyester, right? Bottles, utensils, wires, fins, everything is made up of, out of this. And there are other useful products as well. And terylene is also, you know, another really popular polyester. And this can be drawn into very fine, really soft fibers and woven like a normal yarn. So, when we talk about terylene, it can be used to make garments, sheets, even raincoats. Yeah. Yes, 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 we. Hey, Terry Cot, Terry Wood, Prakash knows about this. Good to know that. All right, so. Now, I saw somebody was already mentioning about polycot and poly wool. So, polycot basically you can see is polyester plus cotton, right? And poly wool is polyester plus wool. Really simple, isn't it? So, polyester fabrics are being sold by the names of polycot and poly wool. And how are they being made? Polyester is basically mixed with the natural fiber. Cotton in the first case, wool in the second case, right? They are basically made by mixing two types of fibers. So when we talk about polycot, poly wool, you would know that the two types of fibers which are present. Correct. Absolutely right. So, there you go. You know about polycot and I think polycot... You can figure out that it's cotton, poly wool, wool. This is pretty simple. Yeah. Now talking about the uses, some of you have already mentioned the uses as well. So, really simple examples we've taken, which is from the exam point of view going to be really simple for you to remember, right? So we've got sports wear, we've got casual wear. We've got bottles, we've got utensils and I think, you know, by reading all of these only you'll remember and of course, you see everything being used around you, isn't it? Yes. Natural fibers. Mind map. Correct. Mind map, okay. We'll definitely try to work on that one. Okay, now the next we have is acrylic. Let's talk about this now. Now, here, you'll actually be amazed to know that we use, you know, a lot of sweaters, a lot of winter wear, use blankets. We use so much in winter. And if you think everything is made out of wool, you might want to rethink about this, right? Now, we have this amazing fiber with us. Right, now this actually in a way, it's a synthetic fiber that has similar texture and feel as compared to wool, right? So it appears to resemble wool over here, but over here, the blankets that you're using or the winter wear might not necessarily be made out of wool. It might be actually made out of acrylic. Yeah, that's why we're saying in a way it's resembling, right? Similar texture is there, so it's not everybody would be able to guess the difference then. Yes, sweaters, shawls, a lot of winter wear. Correct. Talking about the property, see, wool would definitely be really expensive, right? That's why acrylic became more popular due to its low cost. And then, of course, we have lightweight. It's sunlight resistant and it is actually available in various colors also. So whenever we are in a way synthesizing a new type of fiber, the reason being is the properties, the underlying properties are really, really helpful. Yeah. 
Okay, you will tell me some uses of acrylic quickly now. Let's see who's going to answer this one. Yes, yes, affordable for sure. He is with the correct winter wear. All right, yes, you people are mentioning it right. So, as we discussed, it's resembling wool, right? So, sweaters, shawls, carpets, and then of course, you've got sportswear also being made up of acrylic, right? Now, we've been praising synthetic fibers ever since, but we have something really important to tell you as well. We've been talking about all good things, right? Till now, we've been telling you that, you know, these are the advantages of synthetic fibers, but there is a but. Now, you have to be really careful while using, like if you are working in the kitchen, you have to be really careful because synthetic fibers can catch fire easily and they can melt, they can stick to the body. So remember not to wear synthetic clothes, right? While working in the kitchen or even while working in the lab. So in laboratory also you've got burners around you, right? So this is actually a big disadvantage of synthetic fibers. And you know, a lot of times this question is being asked because the entire chapter is mostly dealing with a lot of positives of synthetic fibers, right? Why are we having more of synthetic fibers now? Why are we shifting towards that? What are the important properties? What are the advantages properties? And then, you know, slightly, this is a point that we miss. And you know, there is a question in the exam. There's a one marker, but now you know. Yes. Alright, then we also discussed about plastics, right? So, can you quickly tell me some uses of plastics? Let's see. Who is going to, in a way, mention the maximum uses of plastics? Bottles, okay. Cups, furniture, correct. What else? Uses of plastic. <clears throat> Hey Ayush, we've just discussed that you'll have to go back, watch the video again and you'll understand. Containers, pen, storing food, containers, pipes, storing food, storing food, toys, chair, switch, straws, bags, pipes, bucket. Great! And, you know, they're available in different shapes and different sizes. I mean, a chair looks very different from a bucket. A bucket looks very different from a pen. A pen looks very di different from a lunchbox. All these are different looking, right? Correct. Absolutely right. Now, why are they basically available in different shapes and sizes? The reason is that you can easily mold them. That means you can easily transform them into large or small objects according to your choice, right? So they can be melted, they can be recycled, reused, you know, colored, rolled into wires, sheets, whatever you wish. Yes, furniture is absolutely right. Yes, chair table is right. Correct. Absolutely right. And then I saw somebody was writing about the arrangements, long back. So there you go. We have two arrangements as well. We've got linear and we've got cross link. So when we talk about linear, it's, you know, linear arrangement of monomers. So monomers are arranged in straight line. When we talked about cross link, this basically means that there's going to be a network. You can see a network like structure out there. So this is definitely straight and this is having a network. Linear and cross-linked. Great. Then we also discussed about the types, right? So we've got thermoplastics. All this that is being discussed is super important. It's like a quick revision that you can have this complete summary is right there in front of you. You can actually check what all do you, you know, you're able to recall, what all you remember, what all you do not remember, what you need to revise. It's like one power pack class. 
करेक्ट स्मिथ सो यू का थर्मोप्लास्टिक्स दैट गेट डिफॉर्म्ड इजीली ऑन हीटिंग एंड दे कैन बी बेंट इजीली प्लस यू नो यूजुअली वी कैन सी दैट द मेल्टिंग पॉइंट्स आर आल्सो लो जनरली स्पीकिंग ओके थर्मो सेटिंग प्लास्टिक सो वंस यू सेट देम दे कैन नॉट बी रीमोल्डेड अगेन सो वंस दे आर मोल्डेड दे कैन नॉट बी सॉफ्टेंड अगेन सो बेसिकली इन अ वे दे बिकम रिजिड इन इरिवर्सिबल manner whenever heat is being applied in case of thermoplastic you can keep remolding it but that's not the case with thermo setting correct i can see you people are posting the examples so yes when we talk about thermoplastics we have polythene and polythene is like one of the most common commonly used plastics in the world yeah so how is this polythene being achieved right it's basically produced using the polymerization of ethene monomer so you know the monomer and polythene now correct yes yes i'll come to pvc don't worry about this so polythene is an example of a plastic which is used to make polythene bags simple right you use so many polythene bags but now you know the monomer that is being used in it next we have pvc so we have poly vinyl chloride now this of course you can know that vinyl chloride is primarily being used to make pvc is right it's a hard and strong plastic used for making containers cable electric cable insulators so basically pipes packaging materials all these are being made using pvc Yes, absolutely right. Pipes, coverings. Polyvinyl. Yes. Now, the examples of thermosetting plastics. So those two were the examples of thermoplastics, right? Now comes the thermosetting plastics. We've discussed about bakelite, and we, I'm sure all of us remember that bakelite is a bad conductor it's a poor conductor of heat and electricity so yes poor conductor of heat and also electricity and that's the reason in a way it's being used in making you know switches handles of utensils poor conductor correct next of course we talked about melamine as well this is another thermosetting plastic which is hard right and it does not melt down on heating so it resists fire it tolerates heat better so it can withstand more heat it's used in making kitchenware floor tiles heat resistant fabrics remember this because i'm going to come back to this point i'll also cross check if you remember everything or not yeah all right now talking about the properties first important property is that it's non reactive See, we know about metals. So, suppose I talk about iron. When exposed to moisture, what happens? It gets rusted. Other metals would get corroded, but that's not the case with plastics. So, they are non-reactive. They're not corroded easily, right? They are lightweight. Also, they are strong and durable as well. Then, of course, they are poor conductors of both. Like mostly, you will notice of heat and electricity, and that's why you know the wires have a plastic covering. I'm sure you all have noticed this. or even the handles of utensils are made up of plastic bilkul sahi correct i can see you people are mentioning about easy handling that is true and it's economical as well so yes it's affordable yes you can mold it correct correct yes you people are right and you people remember all the important properties of plastics also and we also discussed some special uses you remember we talked about you know how it's being used in hospitals to make you know gloves stitching thread syringe in packaging and we also talked about the uniform of firemen so you know what my question is which plastic do you think is being used to make this uniform let's see Someone has already answered. Smith has also answered. A lot of you are answering. Somit has also answered this one. 
साइंस फ्लाई ऑल राइट नाउ यू ऑल आर मेंशनिंग इट करेक्ट इट्स यस इट्स थर्मोसेटिंग इट्स मीलेमाइ करेक्ट यस यस इट्स मीलेमीन मीलेमीन करेक्ट थर्मोसेटिंग यस ग्रेट now of course we talked about teflon also you remember it's a special plastic that is basically being used in the kitchen also why because oil and water do not stick to it so yes non stick cookware you know what to do you have to use teflon correct now till now we've been discussing about the endless list of articles which are made of plastic right there are so many things made up of plastic this means since the usage is more more waste is also getting accumulated and this obviously means that the disposal of plastic is going to be of major concern why the reason being that it's non biodegradable what's the meaning of this term now non biodegradable means that it cannot be easily decomposed to natural processes so it's difficult to break it down it's difficult to degrade it and that's why we were calling it as non biodegradable correct plastic is toxic for environment absolutely right dangerous for everyone correct good awesome all right so just like we've discussed non biodegradable waste a quick recap of biodegradable waste which i know that you people are already aware of now these are the waste which can get decomposed so basically it can easily be broken down right it's easy to degrade it's easy to break it down through natural processes say like bacteria it could be sun's rays also it could be water oxygen a lot of natural forces are there right if that is happening then in that case we call it as a biodegradable waste for example you can see paper you can see vegetable peel fruit peels you can see wood wool cotton a lot of stuff is being mentioned yes correct now since plastic takes several years to decompose obviously it's not that environment friendly we know this by now right a lot of bad stuff is a lot of pollution is being caused because of plastics so if you throw it in water of course it is going to affect aquatic life for sure and that is not something that we want if you try to burn it poisonous gases are being produced it's going to cause air pollution if you try to dump it in soil unfortunately soil pollution would be there then of course the waste are being thrown here and there you know they can get into the drains they can block water drains talking about animals they can affect animals as well because animals can eat it they can get caught in it they can get sick because of it again not something that we want so if plastic remains on land it's definitely going to affect animals if it makes its way to the ocean it's going to affect aquatic organisms and as a whole the disposal of plastic remains a major concern now what can we do about it how can we in a way help in this situation to begin with we can at least separate the non biodegradable waste from biodegradable ones right so we have discussed about the different color dustbins also so use them wisely and you can help to separate plastic at the source level yeah i can see you mentioning about 5 hours Yes see if you've joined in late if you've missed any concept you can always go back watch the video again it's right there VSK has already mentioned the 5 hours do you remember let's see how many of you remember the 5 hours just free this mentioning about reuse joy deep is just writing 5 hours what are these 5 hours since we are discussing what we can do on our part Suman has also mentioned Papia Advika Great yes yes you people are absolutely right so we've got these amazing five hours to begin with it's reduce then reuse recycle recover repurpose and refuse 
Now, why reduce? See, when you lessen the usage of non-biodegradables, what happens? Less of it will go in the garbage. So, in a way, we can reduce the consumption. You have to think of ways to reduce the con consumption. Next is reuse. For reusing, you can modify and reuse plastics. Right? Say, for example, for storing. You can always reuse plastic. You can always modify it for storage purposes as well. Yes, Dia. Yes, Sudha. Correct. Next is recycle. Now, some plastics can be recycled into other products. A lot of things are there. You can have toys. You can have pens. Now, this fourth one, recovery purpose, comes once the first three are already done. Here, in a way, the conversion of waste is happening into resources which are useful for us. Like, you know, electricity, heat, compost, fuel, that way. So, yes, it can act as a substitute for sure. So, in a way, that's why we're calling it recover or we're calling it a repurpose, right? So, Amit, you'll have to go back, watch the video. We've already discussed about that. No, Desha, I'm reading all your answers. Yes, Mrudu, Mrudu Basini. All right, next is refuse. You have to refuse or you should basically not accept anything that is harmful for us, that is harmful for you, for me or for the environment. So we have to be very wise in actually following these five hours. We know what needs to be done. But we kind of take it for granted, isn't it? Correct. All right. So, we have in a way covered the entire chapter. We've had a complete chapter summary. I'm sure you can easily make out the topics that you are actually very confident about and the ones you're not so confident about. So, you know what to do now. You need to revise the topics that you're forgetting and most of you remember all of them. Great. Awesome. So, with this, we've come to the end of today's session. So, for the ones who've joined late, I see a lot of you have joined a bit late. So, we were discussing about this earlier also. So, a gentle reminder. We are just telling you that, you know, finding the right tuition for you is super easy now. Super, super easy because we are confident. We are super confident about the app that is Baiju's app because that is the best app for you. So, go ahead. The link is there in the description box. Check this out for sure. Yes. So yes, we've got you covered. There's nothing to worry about. We keep telling you this. We'll keep coming up with amazing sessions for all of you. And now that you know everything about synthetic fibers, you know about plastics, I think you should use them in a manner that you are able to enjoy the good qualities of it. We've discussed the good qualities, we've discussed the advantages, right? But at the same time, we need to minimize the harmful effects also. So, harmful effects, that's on us, that's on the environment. We've discussed everything. Now it's your time to act like a responsible citizen. Dakshu wants a mentee on this. Disha wants a timetable for the classes. How to fix classes according to the timetable? What about the project? Which project? A lot of you are saying menti, menti, menti. But first of all, just revise this entire chapter in one go, right? And yes, don't forget to like this video, subscribe and hit this bell icon so that you get notified about everything, about all the updates, all the changes. Mind map. Alright, so I've noted it's menti and mind map and we'll definitely try to work on that. Great. All right. So keep exploring the magic of chemistry and I'll see you super soon again. Take care. Bye-bye.